The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, you to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Yule. This is the Habit-Based Lifestyle, where you can access your full potential right now. Finally break free from destructive habits. That dream life, if you want it, you can have it. This is where you transform your health, mind, business, and relationships. Or do nothing and keep your life the way it is. But if you're ready for change, you're in the right place. This is where you're gonna learn how to live a habit-based lifestyle. You, you, you are tuning in to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with, with, with your host, Jesse Yule. This is this is the habit-based lifestyle. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast. Today, uh, we got a special guest on here, Dr. Dave Heitman. Uh, he is with Authentic, uh, which is a company that helps boost people's energy and productivity. Uh, Dave also comes with 30 years in the coaching coaching space with health and wellness, also as a chiropractor. So Dave, I uh, want to welcome you on the show today. Yeah, thanks. Super excited. So give me uh, give me kind of the short uh, rundown of, of just a little bit on your history and kind of how you got into the health and wellness space. And then we'll bring in, you know, how you've gotten into Authentic after that. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's a fun story and, and one that uh, people who get obsessed about something can relate to. And basically, I have on a piece of paper from fourth grade that I wanted to be a pro NFL player. And that moment was like a defining moment in that everything that I did from that point on was science-based, performance-based, and sports-related. Wow, um, so cool. So literally, I would skip school in middle school because these were the days before Google. And I would go to the library and, and I'd have Muscle and Fitness magazine. And I'd be like geeking out over the new creatine trend and trying to research uh, creatine in the library. Um, so that, that goes all the way back and, and that foundation has brought me through up to where my career is now, where still to this day, I'm the person who's, uh, uh, awkward in a lot of situations, but if you get me going in, in, uh, science, health and wellness, I just can't stop 24 hours a day. I'll talk to you about it. So, uh, and through that I've, I've done research, I've published in research. Um, I became a chiropractor. I ran a sports medicine clinic. Uh, I was a director of a hospital system for 25,000 patients. I've had over 10,000 patients myself. Uh, I've been part of all sorts of different sports teams from the Olympics to the pros all the way down through to the youth. Uh, I've personally coached people one-on-one. -on -one, uh, and then a few years ago, I actually went all virtual, which was really fun. Wow. Uh, awesome. And started doing the whole CEO coaching and uh, high performance athlete coaching, just purely online of incorporating mindset and functional nutrition, functional medicine, all of the packages together, because I realized in a clinic setting how limited it right. actually was. So that's where I am today is. Uh, hanging out and building a digital health uh, wellness app company that helps people find their energy and level up their productivity. Yeah, man. So what did you, did you play football like college, high school, of all that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, college was a little bit unsuccessful for me. I, I had a really bad neck injury in, in my senior year in high school. I was had all sorts of scholarships and offers to go play some really cool football uh, and that fell through. So I went through some injury struggles and uh, then I ended up playing men's competitive football and went through a national championship. I was a starting tailback and um, yeah, did, did rugby and football up until I was about 27. So wow. yeah, that, okay. that was a lot of fun. And then all the sports in between, I, I actually made it to state for bowling. Uh, you name it. <laughs> like I, nice. I did it. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing your neck injury is maybe how you found chiropractic. Yeah. Well, so that's actually a funny story. My, my parents believed very strongly in chiropractic. I'd been going since I was a kid, but the chiropractor was the only thing I've had 14 broken bones and torn ligaments. Chiropractors are the only people who actually did something for me growing up. Okay. And so that's what led to my obsession over chiropractic. I was originally going to go be uh, an MD PhD, 
When I was an wow. undergrad, I had a double major in biochemistry and molecular biology. Uh, but I started looking into it and I was like, wow, they're not helping people the way that my chiropractor helped me when I was a kid. And so I, I flipped around after I took the MCAT, I was just like, nah, this isn't for me. And I decided to go to chiropractic so that I could do the type of medicine that I really wanted to. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, me like you, man, I got a similar story. You know, I wanted to be a professional football player. You know, my number one goal was to to play in college and I wasn't sure if I wanted to be WWF wrestler or <laughs> nice um, college football player. So I just played linebacker and kind of put them together. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, so. you just went out and hit people and, and was wondering what happened. Yeah. Yeah, I started so. out in the outside linebacker position uh, just because I enjoyed hitting people. Awesome. Yeah, that's so cool, man. So um, talk to me about what authentic is. You know, I know it helps people boost energy and productivity, but maybe just talk about like how you came up with this name and then maybe the concept of it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, another journey of life that I had to go through is... Um, it, just like yourself, when, when we go through the system and we get injuries and we have all these sorts of things, we, we learn a certain way to do things. And when I was trained as a doctor, I was trained in all of the classic sports medicine things, do this, do this, do this. I ended up losing my health. When I was in practice, I ended up, um, I, I hit all my career goals within five years, but it massively burnt me out. And my teeth started falling out. I started getting stress fractures all over. I had wow. severe brain fog. I couldn't do simple math. Like I, my body just rejected myself. And what I had to do is I had to go through this process of fixing myself. And through that process, I realized that, you know, health isn't just a strength and conditioning program, rehab program, or functional medicine program. Health is about mindset. Health is about daily habits. Health is about all of the simple, basic things that I had stuck to the wayside for the sake of my business and productivity and working seven days a week because I thought it was my dream job. And I was so excited to show up and go work in the Badgers and be on the football field and do all the things that I was doing. And uh, I learned very quickly that I needed to get back to the basics of, you know, um, what I call this, this little pyramid, where if you're missing out on the base of the pyramid, you know, specialized diets, supplements, medicines, all of those things at the top of the pyramid are specialized. If you don't have your foundation set, they're not going to be effective. Some of them, of course, are going to be a little bit effective, but they're going to be temporary. Right. And so that was the equation that I realized going through my own burnout and healing process. And so I just started refining that when I started coaching people and uh, through the process of a few thousand patients and, and a few years of uh, redefining that, I, I really narrowed it into, we really are doing a spiral towards the positive or a spiral towards the negative. And we got to have these tiny little foundational habits to start to make that spiral go upwards. And when we start to get that spiral upwards, that's called filling our bucket. Our bucket can get filled with energy and water and, and all of the joy and passions come back to our life. And so that's what authentic is about. Authentic is about finding those habits and routines in a personalized way that work for you, proven by biometrics to show you that you're going in the right direction and filling your bucket up. And when that happens, you actually become your own authentic self. And when wow. you become your own authentic self, the reason why there's two eyes in the name is because once you become your authentic self, then you can help a friend. And it's not until that point that you can start changing your community and start changing the world. But if we're not our own authentic self, we're going to put out that, that wrong energy and that vibe and that, that community won't build. But if we are our authentic self, it will. So that's, wow. that's the deep meaning of everything. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Well, let's, let's dive into this a little bit. So, you know, we're, you're talking about habits, which is, you know, my game, right? Yeah. Habit-based lifestyle. Um, so like, are these customized habits that each individual person designs or is there, you know, have you developed a system to where they get to choose from them or can you give us kind of an example of what that looks like? Yeah. So what, what we're doing is we're setting up authentic to be the framework 
to help influencers, to help where you get your content from. If the big problem in the industry right now is that you go to Google and it's so generalized that it's not personalized to you, but then on top of it, it's whatever their SEO algorithm favors. So right. it could be totally the wrong information just in general, like uh, a, a completely wrong thought process. And so it's virtually impossible for people to find stuff right now. So authentic is going to be that safe place where influencers and uh, people sharing their content can come in and users will be able to actually find and access what they're truly looking for, give it a try, track it, and see if it actually works for them. And we have a system of review where every seven days, 30 days, and 90 days, where they look back, because that's the biggest thing, all of the philosophies talk about it, everything that yeah. we need to do, we have to look back and see if something was successful for us. So authentic is that toolkit. And then we're bringing in a whole bunch of influencers, if you want to imagine a, a clubhouse or some sort of aspect of that nature, whatever you're favorite social is where you get your content authentic will be another way to grab that content but then actually make use of it and actually have a legitimate thing in your hands that's so cool yeah i remember so so i kind of went through a, a transformation you know in my life you know six and a half years ago i i went through this program called wake up warrior um and they had very specific habits you know you had to do every day um, you know, which was like, you had to work out, you had to, you know, eat a serving of green vegetables every day. You had to journal, you had to, you know, send your wife kind of a, a video or well, you, you didn't have to, but like, that was, this was kind of their philosophy. And what I found was like for a season or a couple seasons that worked really well. Yeah. But then as I got into it, I'm like, man, I, I really have to take these as my foundation and then I have to start customizing them or tweaking them a little bit. And so really out of that is, is where I started to get more into, hey, here's the actual things that I've done that's made me successful in my business or in my health and fitness. And, and then I didn't really have any before I started that for like my marriage or for like, you know, my faith. And one of the things is, is I would find myself struggling, you know, in my marriage or my, or spending time with my kids because I didn't have, you know, habits. I never really had anybody talk to me about what, what's something I could do for my spouse every day that would show her that, you know, I, I loved her, honored her, appreciated her. Same thing with my kids. Um, and then also with faith. And so as I found, as I started to figure that out, everything in my life began to work a lot better. And, and really, as I started my business habit-based lifestyle, I started teaching people how to really customize their habits based off of what their goals were. So when you talk yeah. about 90 days, like really what we do in our program is we we ask you like, Hey, what do you want specifically in the next 90 days, six months? And then we reverse engineer it with the habits yep. that are going to get them there. Um, and so as you're talking about this, I'm like, man, this is like this right up my alley. Yeah. The, the way that I've always approached it. And it's so weird if we back up and I, I probably spent over 20 years, I, I spent six years of my life learning how to read research, by the way. It's wow. really funny in today's society, we talk about, oh, I did my own research. I just spent six years learning how to read research. Uh, and, and I used to have a goal of reading 10 research articles a day. Um, so I did that for a very long time as part of my career. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I, I digress. Um, getting into it, the, the science of this is crazy. Business talks about 90 days. We, we talk about all of these things, but here's the neuroscience. Here's the actual epigenetics of it is that what we now know is that our DNA expresses things, right? So we make our molecules to burn fat. Let's just put it this way in the weight loss aspect. Right. It takes us a full 90 days to change the expression of our chemical profile in our body to start producing more fat burning molecules. So when we do something for that 10 day challenge or that 30 day challenge and we lose that weight, the reason why it comes right back on is it hasn't had enough time to send the messaging to our DNA to express the proteins differently. Right. Same thing with our neurotransmitters in our brain is it takes 90 days to start to instill the habits 
uh, uh, the neurotransmitters in our brain. And, and so the science actually is proven on the back end that we have to have these 90 day segments and goals towards things to be able to consistently do it. And so I've done the same thing for years, picking our goal for 90 days, worked backwards. What is the first 30 days of habits that we can build? What is the second chunk of habits that we can build? What's the third habits? And after 90 days, you got a really powerful stack. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, here's the thing that I found that worked really well for me was I'm very competitive. So when, when I have that 90 day, you know, challenge, um, and when it's in, you know, four areas of life, when I really started understanding that like, Hey, it's, it's great that you really want to focus on your physical fitness, or it's great. You really want to focus on your business, but where I really found um, the most growth was when I was working on areas of my life that I didn't normally work on, which was like my faith and my, my marriage and my, my relationship with my kids. And that was when everything else really took off. Yeah. And, and what was really cool is to see the growth and, you know, we, we have this saying of 1% better every day. Right. And, and what is 1% better every day over the course of a year is, is almost 40% better, right? It's like 37.7% better. And so that means that every 90 days we can change 10%, almost 10% every 90 days. That means over the course of a year, it's like we're changing almost 40%, two years, it's almost 80%, three years, we're a completely different person, Yeah. right? And so that's what we have the ability to do. And, and that's what I really, you know, you're geeking out on the science. I'm geeking out. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> yep. here's the numbers, man. It's like <laughs> yep. legitimately it's like shedding our skin after about two and a half, three years that we're a completely different person than we were. If we can follow a system of habits, um, that get us to the goals. And exactly. I think it's really cool what you're doing. Yeah. And, and it's such a blip in history. People, people have a fear of committing to something because, in our overmarketed world right now, we, we think that it's an all or nothing principle. And what you're speaking is so deeply impactful. Like it, even if you can do something for a year, it's only a year out of your life. That's so such a microscopic thing to be committed to something too, versus the 80 years that you're going to be around. Right. And uh, so it's like, what's the worst case scenario, but people have this fear of failure. People have this fear of jumping in and getting started. And if we just start simple, that's, that's how we overcome that. Yeah. You know, what I find is, is people, you know, they have that saying is people underestimate what they can do in a, in a year and they overestimate what they can do in, you know, 90 days or, or 30 days, whatever that is. And so, yep you know, really what it is, is I, I really think that as a, as a business owner, cause that's what, who I work with is, you know, they're, they're thinking they should just hit a home run all day long. Right. Versus right. like the mentality of, Hey, all I need to do is just get on base, you know, and, and keep putting yep. one foot in front of the other. And the other thing I find is, is there's an all or nothing mentality of, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to market my business for the next week and I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to. And then I didn't see results. So now I'm not yep. going to do anything for three weeks. And then I get motivated again, or I buy some other program or invest in another coach. And then I, I'm going to go get motivated and try it again the same way. And what I find is, is there's a, there's a lack of consistency um, when it comes to results today. And so what I see a lot of people do is they focus on the results. They don't focus on the routine that's yeah. actually going to get them the results they want. Yeah. We idolize the end result of being a millionaire or whatever it is. You know, like we, we imagine the champagne bottles popping at the end of a, you know, like you and I from the sports world, it's like yeah. winning the national championship, like, but it's the work every day in the weight room. It's the work every day in the commitment to your health and uh, sports performance. It's the same in business. It's that, that journey that is the win every day. And that's, that's why I'm a big proponent of gratitude journaling, especially as a business owner. If you're not doing gratitude journey uh, journaling, you're just not seeing 
the wins that are happening every day, you're only focusing on the negatives because you're not hitting that big goal. You're not suddenly getting that huge influx of cash. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Enjoy the journey, not the end result. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, I think for me, like I, I did amateur boxing. I did, uh, um, but I've done bodybuilding. I've, you know, played college oh, yeah. football and, and I think my favorite part of everything that I did was always preparing for preparing for the fight, preparing for the season, preparing for the competition. Yep. It wasn't really the competition day. It was more of the preparation leading up to it that I really loved and enjoyed and really fed off. And, and that was when I felt like I always did my best. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. In business, it's hard to get to that. Uh, in sports, it's easy because you can, you can see the end result of training every day to win a national championship in business. It's hard to see that end result of that national championship. This is if you just, Oh, I made my first million dollars. Great. Now I want to make $10 million. And yeah. that line just well, keeps getting bigger. <laughs> well, let's talk about, let's talk about that a little bit because I, I really think in business, you know, we can always measure our bank account in, in health and fitness or sports, we can measure, you know, the competition or the challenge. Right. Um, but in, in life, like, you know, let's say our faith, how do we measure that? You know, so you have gratitude challenge, which is, you know, a, a measurement of faith, but like, how do we measure that we're growing, you know, maybe, you know, growing closer to God or, or, or something like that, or how am I measuring how I'm growing closer to my wife or my kids? Those are the two areas that I really found it, it hard in the beginning. But yeah. once I made it out of a competition, um, then I could kind of see that result that I wanted. You know what I mean? And, and so yep. that was really one of the ways that, that it clicked for me was being able to do that. Yeah. For, for me, it's all about just setting the appropriate goals towards those categories. I look at those categories as like, uh, I know that I want to improve in this one category or this one category. So let's just say mindset, religion, uh, relationships, things of that nature, which we yeah. do have an authentic as well, by the way. Um, so, so I want to improve my relationship for me personally. Like what, what we do is we set little goals that are actually achievable and tangible that we right. know will actually lead to a result of us feeling gratitude towards the situation. Sure. So like I had a goal five years ago, six, six years ago now that I envisioned one day we would own a little farm and I would be able to move my parents in and we'd be able to live next door to each other and, and create a family community of togetherness. And a year and a half ago, we bought property to do that. So right. Cool. So it's these little things. I mean, that's obviously a little bit bigger thing, <laughs> a little bit bigger commitment, but it's those types of little things. And, and then the next step is, OK, great. Now we have this land and we're living together. What is the next step? The next step is that we're creating a food forest. And what does that mean? We want X number of trees. We want chickens. We want uh, those sorts of things. And so those are very tangible things that we know that we're always striving towards something just because we are motivated people. We want to be doing stuff. We want to feel like we're winning. So those right. little things along the way, and then the gratitude is what settles it in. When we get the chickens on the land, when we have the X number of trees, we can look back and just be really grateful for that and know that that is filling my bucket towards relationships and filling my bucket towards um, my wife and I. Yeah, that's so cool. One, one thing that, that I did is, you know, I, I committed to taking my wife on, on date night, you know, 12, 12 consecutive weeks. I love that one. In a yeah. row. And, and, you know, I, I will say that for probably the last six and a half years, we've went on, date night probably every week for the last six and a half years. Now, obviously, you know, we've missed here and there, but it's been very consistent in that. And, and what I find is, I don't know about you, but what I find nowadays is people know more of what they don't want than what they do want and they get more of what they don't want. And so, you know, what, what I found is, you know, it'd be like, Hey, you know, Dave, what do you want? in this area. And a lot of times it could be business or relationships. And they're like, well, here's what I know I don't want. And that's how they start that conversation. And, and they can't figure out why they keep getting more of that same thing. 
yeah they're creating their own reality right and and you know that's that's what i find more than anything today is is people are more committed to what they don't want than what they do want and they don't understand why they can't get what they want yeah it's it's really interesting i mean it it becomes a tough topic it, if uh certain people that i've worked with we do have to go back to their childhood and how they were raised, right? Like, yeah. is it okay to ask for things for myself? And a lot of people were raised in a shameful situation to ask something for themselves. And they could only ask for things that would be like work related or school related, right? Everything had this specific purpose and they never, they never had an opportunity to ask themselves. So we can start into those types of conversations with people. Other people are just so wound up around current day situations yeah. that they, they forget that there's this whole history of things that they've thought about in their life that maybe they wanted to go fishing and, you know, the pandemic hits and uh, suddenly everyone has all this time that they've been bitching about for several years that they wish they had. And the first thing they do is they sit down and drink and do nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, because they forgot about the past that they had and the wants that they had. And right. so it's a lot of times reinvigorating themselves. There's exercises that I've taken people through where you just think about the best time you had when you were in high school, when we bring people back to their childhood, the memories aren't solidified from a neuroscience standpoint yet. And so we can go back to those happy places. What is the best thing you remember about your childhood? And then they'll say something logistical, like it'll be like, oh, I went to prom, right? Okay, well, tell me about prom. And then they'll say something logistical again. And the whole goal with this exercise is get them to relive the emotion that they were feeling during that prom. Sure. And then now what can you do in current day to relive that emotion again? What would give you that feeling that I'm getting goosebumps right now as I'm, I'm talking about this because I love, love thinking about this is, is rewiring the nervous system to open up to opportunity. So that's one type of exercise that people can go through uh, to figure out where they want to go in the current. Yeah, that's so good, man. Let me ask you this. What, what are the top two habits that have, that you really feel like have changed your life um, the most, or maybe had the greatest impact on your life? Yeah. If for me, it was getting back to a walk every day, okay. you know, getting out of the competitive mindset that I need to be running or working out in order for it to be healthy. Uh, so for me, it was the walk and the gratitude. Okay. That awesome. The, the walk really for me, especially when I was at my worst, when I was severely burning, burning out, I couldn't work out. I couldn't do much of anything. And so that walk allowed me to just completely unwind my nervous system and relax. And then the gratitude started bringing in perspective because until that point, I was like the hungry, thirsty <clears throat> need to have 50 clinics. I need to be doing this. And, and I never stopped to realize where I was actually at. I was always just like more, more, more. I want more, 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 which led to a really self-destructive habit uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the, the one thing about walking is that, you know, we, you know, when we move, we're, we're changing our energy, right? Um, and, and I think that's one of the most important things, you know, for people maybe listening to this is if you struggle waking up in the morning and maybe your, your thoughts are, you know, more of thoughts that are kind of against you per se, I think, you know, the, the number one prescription for that is to move, right? Because when we move, we change our energy, we change our energy, we change our thoughts. Um, yep. and, and so really it's what I'm hearing you is say, listen, I, I couldn't do a lot of things, but I could walk. And as I began to walk, I began to change my energy. And as I began to change my energy, I began to change my thoughts. The, the other thing <clears throat> that I would add to that specific situation, if you're having trouble in the morning, that this is another big impact that I've had with thousands of people is chugging water. And yeah. I don't mean just sipping water. I don't mean, you know, casually sipping your, your water when you wake up in the morning, like actually chugging water will change your state of mind in an instantaneous. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> it's just getting that that fluid in there it it really just resets your whole body and and most people are dehydrated in the society they don't have enough electrolytes and i could go on and on but um getting that water and that walk in in the morning then we're talking about you know the outside weather the 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 uv rays and things setting your whole carcinian rhythm so you actually sleep better so one of the best sleep routines is to get a walk in the morning you know the list goes on of the benefits of it so cool, man. You're, uh, you're speaking my game. So let, you know, we could talk about even in the morning, you know, you wake up dehydrated and then all of a sudden most people, what do they drink coffee? So then yep. it dehydrates them even more that they can't figure out, Hey, I got a headache. I need more caffeine. Yep. Um, and, and so, you know, you're really speaking, you know, you're speaking my language number one, but, um, we could geek <laughs> out on this stuff all day long, but for um, sure. You know, I, I love just kind of what you're talking about and, and then throwing in the gratitude because, you know, gratitude is really something that sets our state and sets, you know, our, our thoughts and we're looking for what's right versus, you know, looking for what's wrong or, or what's, what's going on in our life. And I think it switches us kind of from life's happen life's happening to me to know these are things that I'm grateful for in my life. Um, which, you know, we all know if you're, if you're, if you got gratitude, chances are you're probably going to receive more of that in your life versus, you know, like we talked about having more of the, the other stuff, you know, and, and so I think that think those three things are, are huge and, and very impactful. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a constant in life in that something will always go wrong and things will always happen to you. And if you don't know how to look for the shining light, if you don't know how to look for the things that you're grateful for, it's always going to wear you down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like every night we practice gratitude with our girls before they go to bed. That's the last thing that we do with them is what were you grateful for today? What was the best time of your day? And uh, that's just training the brain so that when they go to sleep, they're optimizing their brain growth patterns to always be looking towards the positive. And now we're at a point where we've done that for several years and, oh, it's just so crazy. Like when something happens, they're, they're the first to say, oh, but we have this, right? Like they don't get pissed off and frustrated. Of course they do a little bit, but they immediately bounce back and become grateful right. for something. So it's, 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 uh, I have my own little science experiments here that prove it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really learning how to reframe, you know, if we yeah. want to call it that right. Reframe, you know, we, we may not be able to, we may not be able to change what happened, but we can change how we respond to it. And, yep. and being able to put that in and reframe that on a day-to-day -day basis, I think is, is really powerful. Um, and, you know, I think it's something that, you know, I, I just think in day-to-day -day life, we're always going to have, have things happen, but like how we respond and how we're trained to respond to them. It's kind of like getting knocked down, you know, are you going to stay down or yep. you can get right back up and be like, well, you know, Hey, I got knocked down for eight seconds, but I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get right back up. Yep. So let me Beautiful. ask you this, man. So, so you have this app, you have this thing you're working on. What's next for you and your business? Yeah, so we are, uh, this is a fun new world for me, obviously, being uh, in the solo business, you know, whatever you want to call it, the lifestyle business for so long. And now I'm in the startup world, right? And uh, building a technology company. And uh, the, the powerful aspect of this is that there's a deep AI aspect of it. There's a new way thing that, that uh, we have a patent on called digital empathy. And we are changing the game on how technology is actually relating to people. And so this requires a whole different level of thought process. And uh, so the next big things for us are, we got to get people on our platform launch. Uh, we're launching soon with some tools that people can use uh, so people can sign up for a wait list. Um, but then it's, it's really just uh, caring about people. That's the beauty of this is, is the, I have it on my shirt, you know, provide empathy, get connected and empower people. That's what we're all about. And that's, that's what we're doing. So that is the next step for our business. We can, I, I get a kick out of this whole startup world. They talk about customer acquisition costs and all these things that like, they're forgetting about the actual connection. Connection. To the end user. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so we're, we're changing the game up and, and I'm listening to my gut and my heart because I'm in this game to help people and I'm going to grow a big company. I know that because I know that doing the right thing and the good things, putting people on an actual user journey where they can have success and changing their life is the new game. It is the new company. It is the new business. And empowering people in your tribe of people and building that community is how the world is going to change for the better and get rid of all this social media negative crap, all of the whistleblower of Facebook a few days ago, like all of that stuff that's happening out there is going to start to go away once people start building these, these better tight-knit communities that aren't so global thought process finding the tribe of people. So that is our, our next step is building that authentic connection. Wow. That's so cool. So when, when do you kind of plan on launching this whole thing? Um, I know you're talking a little bit about investing and stuff like that. So I'm I'm sure it's kind of hard to, to gauge completely, but (laughs) when do you see yourself really launching this? Yep. We have our wait list going right now. Um, mindofdave.com you can go to. Um, Mind of Dave is, is where we're putting all of our blogs and our podcasts and it's our wait list so people can sign up. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be launching our beta program for breathing, which will help people sleep better or get more energy or get out of anxiety loop. Um, and then right after that, hopefully November timeframe, uh, we're launching this uh, social feature where people can get connected with each other. And this is where that community is going to start to be closely developed. So uh, that's all happening soon. It's going at the speed of light. Yeah, we're looking for investors. We're looking for angel investors to come in. We're looking for other influencers to come in and help us. Um, So lots of moving projects, which is fun from a business standpoint. Right. And this is just as a side note is as a CEO, you have to learn how to um, not focus the center of attention on yourself. And you have to have the gratitude and, and respect for all of the other really intelligent people that are out there that you work together and something magical happens. So even though we're not fully funded yet, we're building a whole bunch of this stuff based off of people just wanting to help us because our mission is so strong and our value system is so strong. People just want to help us. So that's where wow, we're at. That's so cool. So if people want to get involved with you, your business, kind of this movement you're building, how would they do that? Yeah. So go to that mindofdave.com. Uh, that is our, our direct podcast link. Or they can email me directly at Dr. Dave is D-R-D-A-V-E at authentic.com. And authentic is with two eyes. Cool. And if you guys are listening to this, you know, you can always check the show notes and and find the link. We'll make sure we link this up um, and go directly to to that link, uh, that website. So um, also like uh, I think on your site it says authentic level up your productivity, then you have an alpha code. Is that is that something? That'll be happening when, so everyone can sign up on the wait list. And as we launch to different, like we're starting with iOS for the breathing app first, just from a development standpoint. Okay. Um, yeah. So you'll get your codes and we'll be doing, we're still going to help people in the email list. And this is really critical for me is we're still going to help you find yourself. We're creating unique ways to self-assess and you're still going to get some help and you're still going to move forward. Uh, you may not be able to use the app right away, but as we do the different features over the next couple of months, you'll be able to still still hold in there and get content and all the good stuff. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, hey, I, I really appreciate you uh, being on the show um, and just contributing and and love what you're doing, man. And I really look forward to seeing what seeing when this comes out. Yeah, thank you. Gratitude for the opportunity. And if there's any way I can help out, let me know. Okay, great, man. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys are listening to this and, and you want to find out more, just make sure you check out the show notes. Also, if you have any questions about how to live a habit-based lifestyle, um, you can reach out to me, jesse at habitbasedlifestyle.com. Until next episode, have a great day. The purpose of this show, the purpose of this show. is to guide you to realign. The with habits that get you to live the life, live the life. you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast. 
with Jesse 